Good morning, and welcome to worship on Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday of the church year, November 22nd, 2020. Our radio broadcast and altar flowers are given today to the glory of God and in loving memory of Donald and Audrey Anderson by their daughter Karen and granddaughters Sarah and Hannah. May your memories be comfort to you this day. Thank you for sponsoring these important ministries. Please continue keeping the family of Dorothy Norman in your prayers. Dorothy died unexpectedly on Tuesday, November 10th at the Pinecrest Care Facility in Powers. Dorothy was a longtime member of Bethany and the mother of Vicki and Steve Buke. The family is planning a memorial service for next year. We also continue to keep the Karn family in our prayers. Arlene Karn was the mother of Will and Paul Karn and Linda Howes, and she died on November 3rd. We share the joy of one Bethany member who is celebrating a birthday this coming week. John Cavadeus will turn 84 years old on Tuesday, November 24th. We wish you a birthday blessings and a wonderful year to come, John. Thank you for everyone for continuing to turn in your giving estimates for 2021. They are very helpful in planning our ministries for the year ahead. For those of you who have volunteered to help decorate the church in the past, and for anyone who would like to get in on decorating this year, please put Monday, November 30th on your calendar. Dave Moran is organizing things and has an overall plan, so please give him a call if you'd like to help out. We will soon have angel trees set up in the Circle Drive foyer area. Brooke Prince and the 4th through 6th grade community service group have identified the families with the help of Operation Christmas Smile. And there will be plenty of opportunities to purchase both practical and fun gifts for area children. This is a wonderful opportunity to show how much we care at Bethany. Finally, thank you radio listeners for being with us today, either on AM 600 or FM 93.5. And thank you viewers who are joining us on Facebook Live or later on our YouTube channel. Thanks go out to all who are helping out with today's worship service. Our musicians, John and Kim Beck, our organist, Paul Ryala, Kyra Beck, who is running our live stream, and me, Sarah Beck, who is serving today as our assisting minister. This morning, we also welcome Pastor Ken Michaels, Michaels excuse me, who is filling for Pastor Terry. Pastor Ken served our synod for 38 years as the head of Northland Retirement Community in Marinette. He retired in 2013 and has served many area congregations by working as an interim and supply pastor. Thank you for being here, Pastor Ken. Now, let us join together in a confession and forgiveness. So good morning and welcome to this worship service. This is a service of the word. So Holy Communion is not a part of our celebration today. So today we concentrate on the word of God and principally Jesus is the word of God. So blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. In a moment of silence before our confessional prayer. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. And then the promise of forgiveness. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. 
Amen. And our gathering hymn today is O God Beyond All Praising by Kim and John. Sings we. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to 
God's people on earth. the day is the summary of the lessons in one short little prayer. And so we pray, O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We turn then to the reading of our scripture lessons for this Sunday, this Christ the King Sunday, beginning with an Old Testament reading from the 34th chapter of the book of Ezekiel, beginning at verse number 11. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among the scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses and in all the inhabited places of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be their shepherd, the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you have pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns and you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall lead them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsibly, Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7 is. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all good. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it 
and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. The second reading for the day comes from the first chapter of Ephesians, beginning at verse number 15. St. Paul wrote, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the likeness or the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. And our Holy Gospel reading for this Sunday comes from the 25th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at verse 31. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory, and all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, You did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and gave me no food. I was thirsty and gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. And then they will answer, also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment and the righteous into eternal life. And here ends then the reading of the Gospel of the Lord for this Sunday. Praise to you, O Christ. 
And grace and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We're now at the season, at the end of the season of Pentecost, which is a long season. This is the 25th Sunday, actually, of Pentecost, this Sunday that we call Christ the King Sunday. And basically, we've lost this whole season to the pandemic. I believe the pandemic started way back in the beginning of March, just at the beginning of the season, actually, that follows East, or follows rather, I uh, uh, can't remember which Sunday now, follows, uh, but at any rate, the season of Lent. We ended with the beginning of the season of Lent, and that was the end of our basic attendance and worship services in church. And then we lost the whole season of Pentecost to the pandemic. So now we come to the very last Sunday in this season, Christ the King Sunday, and the emphasis on this Sunday is on the ultimate lordship of Christ. So our readings for the day, the Old Testament lesson from Ezekiel, the 34th chapter. Ezekiel was one of the principal prophets. He worked alongside of Jeremiah back about 600 years B.C. at a point in which in history there was all kinds of trouble between nations. Ezekiel was apparently a very well-educated person. He knew geography. He knew the political situations in his land at that time. And he was one of the 10,000 or so who were hauled off into captivity when the Babylonians destroyed Judah, Israel, and the temple. He knew that there was little hope for Judah, and he knew that the temple was being destroyed, and he lamented with his people for the loss of all that they held dear. He also heard from the Lord that his beloved wife was about to die as well, but he was told by the Lord not to grieve over much for her, just as the Lord did not want the people of Judah to mourn over much for the loss of the temple and their land, because the Lord was telling them through Ezekiel that ultimately there would be a new day. In the lesson that we have before us today, we have a real condemnation for some of the leadership in his particular situation, in his particular day. And so Ezekiel speaking for the Lord says that the Lord is going to separate the sheep from the sheep, kind of an unusual thing. But apparently some of these leaders were not doing the kinds of things that the Lord expected of them, and they were abusing other members of their own community. So the Lord is going to separate the sheep from the sheep. Some will be rewarded and some shall be punished. So he announces God's judgment on several countries, including Judah. But he also reminds the people that ultimately the Lord indeed will love his sheep and bring them through a new day under a new David, which we would ascribe to be a representation of Jesus, the Lordship of Jesus. The psalm that we had before us today is a psalm of praise to the Lord, who is a God above all gods. And I would guess that probably this psalm was included in terms of these readings for the day because at the end of the psalm there is a reference to we being the people of his pasture, the sheep of his pasture, the lambs who belong to the Lord. In the second reading for the day, we go to the book of Ephesians. St. Paul is the author. St. Paul knew the city of Ephesus. He had worked there for probably three years. But it almost seems like, as we read this lesson for the day, he, that he does not know all of these people. So apparently the congregation in Ephesus had been growing. So he is writing to them not to speak about some particular pro problem in the congregation, as he frequently did in his writings when he writes to congregations. But what he's doing instead is trying to lift them up and to help them understand more fully who this Jesus was as Lord of all, the one who will be raised above all things, and all leaders, and all people. Christ, he says, is over and above all others in this world. And then we go to the gospel reading for the day from the 25th chapter of Mass Matthew. Jesus is the speaker, and while this appears in Matthew's gospel in the midst of a group of parables, this little event here, or this little statement from Jesus to his disciples is not a parable. But it's a statement about all of those who shall be gathered someday before the throne of glory. And Jesus is saying that the sheep now 
will be separated from the goats. The goats really get a, a bad name in terms of this lesson. The goats apparently are those who are really not doing the kinds of things that should be expected of the people of God. And the separation between the sheep and the goats is based upon how the people had responded to the needs of those around them in this world. It's pretty harsh. And he says to those who are at least called goats in this lesson, when you did not do it to the least of these among us, you did not do it to me. But he also praises those who respond to the needs of the people around him and lifts them up in terms of the reading for the day. So the theme for the day is obviously that Christ is the Lord of all creation. And we consider today the coming of the kingdom of God throughout the whole world. And we pray, O Lord, thy kingdom come. Luther, in his explanation to the statement from the Lord's Prayer, the, thy kingdom come, says that God, God's kingdom indeed comes without our doing anything. It comes to us simply because of the power of God. But we also pray in this prayer that the kingdom would come to us and among us as well. Now we know that ultimately at the end of time, the kingdom of God will come and we shall see it in all of its glory. And there are those among us who pray that the second coming would happen soon. I guess they're getting tired of all the trouble that there is in this world. But we really want this world to continue because if you look at creation, what God has done, it is a beautiful place to live for most people. And we wish it could be that for all people everywhere. God the Father has given us a beautiful creation in which to live. And then he has given us his spirit to help us to know what he has done for us, particularly through the gift of the Christ. And then he has given us Jesus, the great example of his love. We know ultimately the kingdom of God shall come in all of its glory, but we also hope the kingdom of God to come now among us as we live in this world with our neighbors. And it does come in little parts when, the, when we do those kinds of things that are gracious and kind and loving. Almost seems like the kingdom of God on earth has had a setback during this pandemic. And it seems like there is more hostility and anger and frustration and difficulty and trouble and trial than perhaps we have seen in our lifetimes. And it's discouraging to see sometimes how we treat one another. And it's almost scary. I just heard this week and a little bit more about that plot on the governor of Michigan and the state house in Michigan. And that really sounds like a terrible kind of event that these people were planning, how far some of our sheep have strayed from the kingdom of God. And then this weekend, there was a shooting down at the Mayfair Mall in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, demonstra demonstrating again how far it is that some sheep stray away from the purpose that God has for us in this world. Almost seems like the ministry of our church and our world has had a setback, and we wonder when this is all over, Will we be able to get back to the business that we are really to be engaged in with one another in this life? We know what we are supposed to be doing in Christ's name. The things that are listed in the gospel reading for the day, these things that God has in mind for us to do as we care for one another in this world. So we know that in spite of all things, what we see around us in this world, we see also many examples of people serving in Christ's name, providing food for those without food, providing shelter for those without shelter, providing care for those who are ill and sick, even visiting and encouraging those who are in prison and helping them to be guided to a better life for themselves. There are many things that people are doing right now to demonstrate that the kingdom of God is still alive and well and working in the world in which we live. And just listening to your bulletin and looking at your newsletter, it is evident that the work of the kingdom is also being done even during this time by members and people of this congregation and all of the congregations that we have around us in this community. So we might have suffered a blow, but that does not stop the kingdom of God from coming. 
We know our Lord is love, and that is our motivation. God has given us the great gift of love in Jesus Christ, his son. We know how much he cares for us. We are his sheep, the people of his pasture. And because we have been loved so much, we are called upon then to also care and love one another. The kingdom comes when the people of God do his work in the world in which we live. And because of the love we have in Christ, we are motivated to be God's people at this time, in this place, at this point in history, no matter how difficult it might happen to be. So indeed, thy kingdom come, O Lord, among us. In Jesus' name, amen. And I pray, O Lord God, we give you thanks for calling us to be your sheep in this world and help us as we live and work together to demonstrate your care and your love for all people through what it is and what it is that we do. This I pray in Jesus' name, amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, amen. And the hymn of the day is Rejoice for Christ is King. And we can confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Sovereign of all, train our ears to hear your cry in the needs of those around us. Bless all social ministries of the church through which we seek to serve others as we ourselves have been served. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You cause rain to fall on the just and unjust alike. Direct our use of creation to provide for the needs of all people in ways that are sustainable for the earth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Bring peace to every place where conflict freezes. Grant opportunities for ending divisions among us and usher in your reign of unity and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy <clears throat> is great. Heal the sinful divisions we erect between us and release us from the sy symptoms of oppression and prejudice. Restore our capacity to see your image in others. Search out all who cry to you in distress. We pray especially today for all affected by causes of COVID in our, our area. Our shut-ins and those in hospitals and nursing homes who are unable to be visited by family and friends. <clears throat> Heal and nourish all in need, especially Barbara Anderson, John Pinar, <coughs> Lois Pinar, Mary Bieber, Alice Jones, Lloyd Jensen, Bill Van Effen, Elaine Peterson, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, <coughs> Pastor Dave Van Clay, Terry DePlante, Sandy Anderson, Jill Baum, Sandy Flynn, those who are listed at our bulletin, and those we name before you now, either aloud or in this moment in silence. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. <laughs> mm -hmm. On children and youth throughout the church, sustain those who work in children's ministry, youth ministry, and campus ministry as they nurture the gifts of young people. Especially today, we pray for Brooke Prince. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Thank you for saints now departed, who fed the hungry, clothed the naked, and tended to the sick. Especially Dorothy Norman and Arlene Karn. Inspire us by their example, that we may see your presence in those in need around us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. We share the peace in a way that's comfortable for you.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the beginning of a new year be a blessed one for all. And may the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us his beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, the sovereign, the Savior, and the Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. And our sending hymn by John and Kim is Soon and Very Soon. of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.